Hello, welcome to IT Security Labs, and today we're going to complete a room from Try Hack Me. This one is called Umbrella. Our main goal here is to learn ethical hacking and also how to be better defenders for our employers. So our goal is to enumerate on this machine and identify any weaknesses, and if possible, identify how an attacker might have exploited the machine. This one talks about Docker. We'll be able to gain access on the system inside of a docker container and hopefully escalate our privileges how do we go about this well first we have an ip address after we start the machine on try me and we can just come and do an nmap here's the ip address and if i also do a dash vv you notice that we are beginning to scan here and we see port 22 port 8080 port 3306 so right away we can go and check these ports but right away, before I start doing anything, I like to copy this and come to my uh, Etsy host. And I would like to make an entry for this same IP address here, 10, and then name it umbrella.thm. This seems to be what um, the domain names for these machines are. And then immediately, if we open a browser and go to that location, so on port 8080 when we go to umbrella.thm on port 8080 it's asking for a username and password so we don't have that yet we'll keep that in mind let's go back to our results we also have a mysql here we also don't know what that is yet so instead of waiting for this to finish which might take us a while let's go ahead and open one that i already did uh, this is just the same thing except we notice that we have port 8080 we also have port 5000 which is open and port 5000 is important because it says that it's a docker registry with an api version 2 so if we just google docker registry api version 2 you will notice that one of the things that you show up is hectrix and on hectrix they say that uh you can pull the images so docker pull my registry like that but i don't think we can just pull it like that so if we scroll down here it will tell us like hey um First, if you wanted to just enumerate to see if this is working, you can use curl. Let's clear this. So instead of this, we we'll just put here my fully qualified domain name, umbrella.thm. Right, so we notice that we have an umbrella time tracking repo. Coming back here. That's exactly what they got. So we don't have any authentication, so we'll skip the authentication part, part here. You can use this too if you wanted to, but we don't need that. Enumerate using curl, that's where we are. So we did this part here. We can even ask it further, now that it gave us the information. Instead of uh, Ubuntu, we can list our tags for our own repo. So coming back here, we can have this command. I'll paste it in here. That curl command is the same as this one. curl s that thousand v2 so instead of ubuntu tags list i'm going to put this one here this umbrella tags slash list so this will list the tags for us so it's a time tracking up and we have the latest tag so we are actually making progress here we can now see if we can get the manifest by running this curl command here i've done this before i don't like to download the docker images using the manifest information but i'll show you anyway slash latest i'm just literally using the same command just adapting them well by just looking at this it looks like we can actually see the commands that the person ran in uh like, so here's a user ad for user 1000 so we were adding a user we might be able to see passwords in here or anything that the person ran in the command line and i think i saw my sequel somewhere okay here so here's the line command bin sh uh, db pass and i see this right here i can't tell if it's this whole thing here or what but i found the db pass in here in the manifest so to sign in using the same password that we saw in the manifest is my sequel uh, on this host use root and for p i struggled here a little bit because sometimes if you're not careful you might get yourself logged out silly things like this can get you now that we're in uh show databases 
this is my methodology when I get in a database. Every time I ask it for the databases, and then I use whatever database is unique. Then after I get into this database, I will try to see if I can find some users. So show tables. Sometimes there might be interesting tables other than the users, or the users might not be named the same. So here, let's just dump the whole thing. Select all from users. This is only safe in the CTF boss. I know that there is not hundred hundreds of users here. Uh, so here is um, looks like MD5. Okay, so let's go to Craig Station. Okay, so let's grab Claire's password. Coming back here. So clear R. Password one. That's for clear underscore R. So let's go back now and put a name here, putting the user here and password one and login. We are in. So in here, what we notice is that we have a time here. Pro tip, you can use increase time spent. So maybe I can say four plus five and submit. Okay, so I can submit time in here. That's great. According to my uh, end map, I also had SSH open. So I'm going to try to SSH is this user was password reuse is a thing. Tab yes. Pass word one, two, three. No, it's just one. And okay, so it worked. I was going to say if it didn't work, then we'll go back to the website, but just pausing for a second and trying the same password on every service that we've found is kind of important here was password reuse. So when we do this and say ls la, you notice that we have user the text. So now let's get our base history. Hopefully it wasn't deleted. Was it? Well, it was by this command. So we move on. Um, here's your user flag. You can grab it. Time tracker source. And in here we have Docker Compose .yaml. This is how they are deploying the app. Reset is always here's the password that we've. Is this the same password that we found? MySQL root password. Here's the password. Um, they're also launching logs. They're actually mounting logs from here to out there. Okay. Um, then let's also look at app.js. That's the actual main app. What I'm interested in here, since I already know that we have this form here is, where is this app taking this user input? And is it validating this input? If it's not validating this input, since this is a JS file, not JS file, uh, I should be able to see if I can abuse it is if there's no user input. It looks like this operation here requires the operating system to run commands. So most of the time they use the eval method for that. So when I open this, I'm looking where it's talking about time. So up time function. I'm looking for any checks. So here is the calculator that is setting up and this query is updating the user's time, whatever that user that we put, and then we get a response. I don't see any validation. So what I can do is I can try to see if I can get a reverse shell. So I'll come here, refshells.com. I'll put the IP address of my Kali Linux machine here, a random port. And here saying I can set up a listener. And then I'll go here and say, I want a reverse shell. I want it to come from Linux. It's a Node.js application. So I'm going to choose Node.js number two. You can use number one if you wanted to. Number two is what worked. I'm actually getting a, a reverse show with bin bash. So everything is done for me. All I need to do is copy these commands and start um, this machine. So what I can do is come in here, start my listener on port 666, come back here, grab my payload that I have. Actually, before I grab the payload, I would like to, this to go to Metasploit. So I'll open 
Burp Suite. In your Kali, go ahead and launch Burp Suite by finding it here. Search for Burp. Burp Suite, you have the community edition already installed. Go through the initial launch steps. Just hit next, next, next. And once Burp Suite is launched, turn interception off for now. Open a browser. In this browser, we would like to go to the same exact location as what we had in here and sign in as our same user. So I'll copy that. Use the Burp Suites browser and sign in as the same user. Clear R and password of password one. Login. The reason why we're using Burp Suite is because I want to be able to intercept this request. So instead of calculating time here, I'll just say test one, two, three, one, two, three and then start my listener so that I can actually send that request in Burp Suite. I can send the request the same way, but I would like to hit submit now. Here's my listener with test one, two, three. I'll send this to repeater because I don't want to mess with the same um, thing. Then in repeater, where it says time is equals to test one, two, three, I'll re replace my test one, two, three with the payload. The reason why I'm using Burp is so that if the payload doesn't run, I can choose things like URL and code. I can um, run the request multiple times. Paste it here. So here's our payload queued up. So what this will do is it will reach out to our attacker machine on this port. This is just a reverse shell. And we are already listening on 66. So all we need to do now is send this. When we send it, immediately we get a reverse shell. If we say ID, you will notice that we are root here. But before we get too excited, if we go to the root directory, we notice that we got nothing. If we, we can do PD, PWD CD such root and LS, there's nothing. What's happening here? Well, this root shell is inside of that Docker container that we saw in here with Docker, Docker Compose. So get Docker Compose.yaml. This Docker container that was spun using this Docker Compose. Here's the deal. Clay is actually on the actual machine that's running Docker. And that Docker is running the website that we were interacting with. And that website, inside of that Docker container, this is where we are root. We are not necessarily root on the host that uh, we are running. We are on the host is clear so what's happening here on this host this logs here logs folder that's what they defined here cd to logs you will notice that we have tt.log this logs is being hosted on slash logs slash logs inside of the container let's go to the container and check it out cd slash logs pwd i mean slash logs ls the same tt.log is in there. So we know that from inside of the container and inside of the host, we are sharing a file. So what we can do is we can copy such bin, such bash to be in here. As you can see now, it's in there. But if we go to our machine here, if we do an LA, I mean ls-la, here's my bash file that I copied. It's still owned by that user, but we're going to change that. Uh, Chimod 4777 bash. Change and make sure that it has an SUID. Here's the SUID bit set, but it's still owned by that random user. So let's uh, actually make this one owned by root. On um, root. Root. Actually, this is a long about where I could have done it all from here uh, for bash, but I can fix my problem. Ls la. If this would take the SUID bit, as you can see, but we can just do it mode plus s for SUID for bash. Now, if we do an ls la from Claire, she doesn't own that anymore but anyone can execute it. It does have the SUID for both uh, <laughs> root user and the group. 
So now we can type dot forward slash bash dash p as clear. And since this one is an SUID bit set, we should become root if everything works. So where am I? Okay. Oh, by the way, bash dash dash p, it will just execute it. Now we're in as root and cd slash root ls here's your root to text all right so that was our privilege escalation super trivial if you mount a share as root on the host and you also mount that inside of a docker container people can escape using this way so i hope you learned something here please remember to like and subscribe we've been getting a crazy amount of subscribers lately we are now at 54,000 subscribers by the time you watch this video we'll probably be higher but i hope you learned something and i hope to see you next time thank you